Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,691. We're talking today about mobile repairs. You got a problem? Repairsmith's on its way. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Los Angeles with a very special guest calling in by the name of Joel Milne. Joel, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'm ready. Let's go. We'll have some fun. Well, first and foremost, dude, happy birthday. Today's your birthday, right? <laughs> it is. Thank you. All right. Well, gee, I brought the cake. You know, we'll, we'll have a little celebration, a little uh, toast to you today. So there you go. Cheers. Thank you. So happy, happy birthday to you. Now, before I do a proper introduction and we dive into your business, which I really love what you're doing, would you share one little thing with my listeners that maybe most people don't know about you? Something that most people don't know about me is that when I was in college, I drove from Chile to Canada. And I spent a year living in Chile, going to school there and working there. And at the end of it, I did an epic road trip from one end of the Americas to the other. Wow. That's a long drive. How long did that take? You know, it only took about three weeks because what? I had to get, well, I had to get back in time for the start of my senior year in college. Um, oh. You know, it was what's called an experience option for engineers. I, I worked at a mine. I was an engineer. And, and the gap between when I ended my job, my co-op term, and when school started was two weeks. Right. So I arrived one week late and did it in about three weeks. So I, I would like to do it again in about three months time you know, frame, but it was still fun over a three-week time frame. Now, what kind of car were you in? I was in a I want to say 90, but plus or minus one year Isuzu Trooper that I bought in Chile, but it was an American Isuzu Trooper okay. that had been shipped down on a boat, you know, an open boat, no container. I think they bought them at either, they bought them at the auctions and it could have been stolen, who knows, or, or a, a write off or something. And yeah. they, back then, this is, you know, the 90s. There was no free trade, right? So the new SUVs were incredibly expensive, like two to three times what you'd pay in America. Right. But there was a loophole for these used ones. And so I bought it off the off the boat in a duty-free zone yeah. and drove it back to America and was able to re-register it because it was originally an American car. So it was an old Isuzu Trooper uh, that made it all the way. Wow. Well, that's pretty impressive. I ran into a guy here... I live in the Pacific Northwest. My wife and I were over in this beautiful lookout point. We ran into this gentleman from South America who was doing that in a VW van. And he was documenting it the whole way. Yeah. Although he was taking a whole year. So he was <laughs> just driving all the way up to Alaska. He'd gotten all the way to the Pacific Northwest. And then once he was there, he's going to drive across Alaska and the back. I mean, just his whole life out of this and doing this whole YouTube channel on it, which was pretty cool. And that's quite an adventure. That's very cool. I'm impressed. It was a fun adventure. I'll yes. bet. Yeah. You, you learn and meet so many interesting people with, when you're on the road uh, versus getting on an airplane and flying over countries. You do. And and I kind of, you forget about these things you do when you're in your 20s and such. And, and I'm watching this great show with my kids, the Rivian adventure going from Chile up to LA, right? With you and McGregor. And I told my kids, hey, guys, I did that once upon a time. And, <laughs> yeah. and they said, what? Like, no how, way, come you don't, how come you don't do cool stuff like that <laughs> yeah. anymore? And I'm like, Because well, I have kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Because of you guys, I don't do cool stuff anymore. Yeah, exactly. Kids and a mortgage and college looming and all those kind of things. So, yeah. well, maybe they'll follow your lead someday and do something fun like that. That's very cool. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. We're going to dive into your business here. Joe Milne is the CEO of Repairsmith, a company backed by Daimler AG, which is the parent company of Mercedes-Benz, of course, and the first and only full-service mobile delivery solution for car repair and maintenance. He's a serial technology entrepreneur with a love for building consumer-facing products. Joe previously co-founded four venture-backed technology startups and brings a lifetime of experience 
building and operating technology companies to RepairSmith. As a technical founder, Joel has served as CEO, COO, and CTO for his previous companies, having raised over $100 million in venture financing and scaled multiple businesses nationally. He's also an angel investor, advisor to numerous startups, and active in the Southern California startup community. We'll be back in just a minute, but first a word from our valued sponsors that keep food on the table here and birthday cakes for Joel. So sit tight, keep your seatbelts on. We'll be right back. Did you know that Covercraft is much more than car covers? They offer protection for the inside of your vehicles as well. No matter what kind of vehicle you drive, Covercraft makes a floor mat, a cargo area protection product just for your vehicle. Their plush custom fit floor mats turn any ride into something special. Their premier Berber custom floor mats, which are a favorite of mine, if you want something very stylish and unique for your favorite ride, they also have Weather Shield floor liners that provide ultimate protection for heavy dirt, mud, snow, and slush. Their Carhartt custom cargo liners not only look great, but keep your rear cargo area and seats protected from the kids, the pets, or whatever's going on back there. Do you have a pet that destroys your vehicles? Covercraft has you covered for that too with a wide variety of pet protection options. Is your vehicle getting a little long in tooth? There's no better way to give it a new car look than with a custom fit floor and trunk mat. I replace mine every few years with something a little different just for fun. All your options are easy to clean, they secure to the floor, and they look oh so good. Don't forget your trunk too. Custom fit trunk liners for sedans, coupes, and SUVs are perfect to protect the factory carpet from all those things that can stain, tear, and damage your carpets. Check out Covercraft.com for the huge number of styles, colors, and options that you'll love. And I've got a deal for you here at Cars Yeah. If you use the Yeah120 code at Covercraft.com, you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order on me. Go to Covercraft.com, use the code Y-E-A-H-120 at checkout and get 10% off today. Covercraft, they've got you covered. American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo. The one I call my orange crush. They've been protecting vehicles since 1976. With all the time, effort, and money you've put into your classic vehicles, do you know how much you would receive if yours was stolen, damaged, or totaled in an accident or a fire? Your regular auto insurance carriers won't tell you until after the claim, and more than likely, you'll be in for a rude awakening. With an agreed value policy from American Collectors Insurance, you'll be paid your vehicle's full agreed value. No surprises. So don't just hope for a fair claim settlement. Be certain and know exactly what you'll get with an agreed value policy. I shopped around and decided to protect my car with American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-A-C-I-Yeah. That's 866 866- 224-9324 and protect the ones you love. Tell them Mark Green at Cars Yeah sent you. That's American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors, folks just like you and me. All right, Joel, we're back. Now, before we dive into your business, I would love for you to share a success quote or a mantra. This is some kind of saying that has meaning for you. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on Cars Yeah. So, Joel grab the wheel. Sure. So one quote that I have really resonated and stuck with me over the years is that people are motivated by autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And you know, if you think about startups and building businesses, it's really all about people and who you go on the ride with and how they contribute is really going to affect your success or failure in these new ventures, right? And so people really crave the autonomy to work on problems and not be micromanaged. And they want to learn a craft and progress in their career and become masters of, of whatever discipline it is that they're working in and, and purpose, right? What are we doing here? And, and for me, this opportunity with RepairSmith was purposeful, right? That we go out and we touch a lot of people every day. And it's something that my mother can understand. And it's not esoteric and complex, deep technology and blockchain, this and that. And, you know, I think seeing the results of your work and and helping people and having people email you say, you know, I'm so thankful you guys came out today and did a great job is really, you know, makes going to work every day fun. Absolutely. Now, when did you start this business? So I joined 
two and a half years ago. And my co-founder started started off on this journey a little before I joined. And he spent 25 years at Daimler and Mercedes in the after the after sales side of things, uh, parts and service, and is really an expert um, on the automotive side of our business and saw this opportunity and really pushed to bring this to market. And I come from the tech consumer side of things and together we joined up and have been going for you know two and a half years now. Now, how did you know COVID was coming and this was going to be perfect? <laughs> you know, you're like Jeff Bezos, the guy that figured out, you know, if this COVID thing keeps everybody home and they have to order online, I can get really, really rich. Well, it's better to be lucky than good. Yes. But we think it was a great business before COVID and possibly a better business during. But uh, uh, either way, it was a great business and we just got lucky. I, you know, the previous industry, I was in the ticketing industry, a lot of my friends got very unlucky and it's it was a coin flip, right? If you're in live entertainment, you're probably not in a good place right now, but we happen to be in at-home services, which happens to be a good place right now. Well, you know, absolutely. And the other part of this, which I love about what you're doing is most of the time our vehicles don't break when they're at the repair shop. Uh, you start them up in the morning and they don't sound so right or they are making funny noises and you get home and you finally got home and you go, oh, I made it. And you go, now I got to get it to the repair shop. I don't want to pay for towing. And with COVID, you don't want to go anywhere anyway. You want somebody to come to you. So I think it's really cool. So let's have you explain RepairSmith, everything about what this business is, what it does for people, how it works. Sure. RepairSmith is the most convenient form of car repair because we come to you. We can provide 90% plus of car repair on site whether that's in your driveway or at your office, which is less common these days. But um, but for those cases where we can't do it on site or it doesn't make sense to spend three days in your driveway, then we'll take the car and bring it back when it's done. So no matter what the situation is from an oil change to a transmission rebuild, you stay home, we'll take it and we'll get it done for you. Totally convenient transparent pricing up front, of course, backed by a 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, warranty, uh, et cetera, et cetera, fair pricing, you know, everything you'd expect in a great shop experience, but with digital communication, at-home service as well. Oh, I love it. I, I love everything about it. And you think about, too, times when your car needs to be repaired, maybe general maintenance or things that you know you need, new brakes and stuff. How nice to go to work and you come to me and when you get out of your office at the end of the day, the car's done other than, you know, you got to call your boss and say, well, I'm going to be a late. I got to drop my car off. And then they don't always have a loaner. And then they got to drive you and you got some kid driving you and you think he's going to kill you. And, you know, he, he gets lost. And I mean, all these things. So what regions are you active in right now? Right now we're active in the Southwest. So that's all of California, Arizona and Tucson in Phoenix, Las Vegas and Nevada. And we just opened up Portland, Oregon this week. Wow. So you're spreading. Is your goal to be nationwide? Absolutely. We will be nationwide in the next few years. We should cover at least a little more than half the country by the end of next year. Wow. This is tremendous. So tell me the process. Say that I need my car repaired. Now I'm home for COVID. So, you know, the other day, my the place that I bought all my cars from, they, they actually called me. I know them so well. I've been buying cars from them for 26 years. And they said, hey, Mark, you know, this is Ron. I'm just calling. What, what's going on with you? We haven't seen your car since January. And I said, well, this thing called COVID, but I work at home. And he said, well, you know, you still want to, you know, keep the fluids fresh. And I go, you know how many miles I've driven my car this year? 265. <laughs> I, go, I don't go anywhere. And when I do fly, I take Uber. I don't like to leave my car at the airport where well, people can ding the doors. And, and yeah. he just kind of laughed. He goes, yeah, well, we're we're experiencing that. And he said, the other thing we're experiencing is people not driving their cars and dead batteries. Now I keep my car on chargers so I don't get dead batteries. But well, I think this is tremendous and it's such a useful tool for people. And car repair is one of those just necessary pain in the tail things that we all have to deal with. Are there competitors out there that do this? Because I'm not aware of anybody other than maybe some little local entities. I know there might be one guy up north of me here that does that, but he only stays in one little community. Yeah, look, there are all kinds of ways to get your car repaired, right? There are some folks who are independent, who, you know, go around and fix cars mobily. Uh, there are a couple of companies trying to do it, but we are the only ones who provide a full mobile, full service mobile repair experience with brand new Mercedes Sprinter vehicle or a different size format vehicle, but mm -hmm. all new tools, scanners, basically all the equipment you'd find in a modern shop on wheels. All of our technicians are employees, right? So they're not contractors. It's not gig work. Uh, we could not get comfortable with that model that, that we could control the quality, right? It, it's, 
rolling the dice on your McDonald's order delivery, I think is one thing, <laughs> yeah. um, but rolling the dice on your car repair is something else, right? I, I, my cars are my second most valuable thing, right? A second to a, maybe a home. And that applies to either a lot of people and you mess up somebody's car and they're not very happy. Right. right. And so our main investor, our core investor is Mercedes and they're not going to put it out there, a low quality service either. So all of our technicians are, of course, certified, experienced, great technicians, but they're also employees with benefits and, and a good work environment. And so we thought from the beginning, it has to be the quality and experience that you'd get at a great shop, plus all these other things of convenience, digital, online scheduling, transparent pricing, et cetera. Now, being a car guy, one of the biggest questions that comes to my mind, parts. What size is this Sprinter? How many parts do you carry? <laughs> well, look, remember, shops don't carry, you know, there, there, there's 1.5 million types of cars out there. On the common, you know, on the road right now, if you just take year times make time model, no one inventories parts in shops. They get them delivered in time, and that's part of the, the, the time gap between when we diagnose something and when we can actually fix something. And so... It's not that different than the shop experience that we do just in time parts ordering. And sometimes we know what it is in advance and we'll, sh we'll stock the van the night before for the next day's jobs. And uh, if we don't know, then we'll have to take a look at it and we'll have to schedule a follow up if, if parts are needed that we don't have on stock. We might bring the most common ones for that. If it's a no start, you know, we might, we'll probably show up with a battery and, and maybe a starter if you hear a click. And then we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, that's one thing I think most people don't know. They think even if they go to a dealer that the dealers have this massive inventory in the back room. And most of the time, unless you're doing just basic stuff, that's why they always say, well, we're not going to have your car done today. We're going to keep it for another day or two. They've got to get stuff in. And nowadays, everything is shipped overnight everywhere. I mean, goodness sake, you can get something shipped from Germany and have it the next day if you really want to get it. So I understand that. I think a lot of people don't, though. They think that there's these giant shelves in the back of these repair shops or even dealers, and they don't really exist, especially when you run into more serious issues with your vehicle and so forth. But again, just not having to worry about it is is such a relief. So I think it's a brilliant solution. And do you work on pretty much every kind of vehicle there is out there? Pretty much. You know, we don't do classics and antiques. You know, we might not work on your supercar, but for the 99% of vehicles out there, you know, light, light trucks and vans and, and passenger cars, uh, we do everything that you'd find at a, at a good independent shop. Great. Well, I think it's a brilliant idea. And boy, that sounds convenient, especially this day and age. You know, I guess, like I say, in a way, this COVID thing has taught us all to be more flexible and be able to be more nimble and also realize there's now all these other opportunities that businesses have pivoted and created for us that you really don't have to leave if you don't want to. And things can just come to your door. I live in a quiet place. I'm in the suburbs and I live in a cul-de-sac. But I'll tell you, I see Three times a day, Amazon Prime trucks, UPS twice a day, FedEx twice a day. On my little street, I only got eight houses on this street. <laughs> they're just, they're coming all day long. But of course, I realize it's a component of what's going on now because many people, I live in an area where there's a lot of older people. They don't want to go out. They don't want to risk their health. So um, yeah, yeah we're, we're all, we're all but, trained for you. We're ready for you. It's true. You know, the future is frictionless. And, you know, you mentioned the current situation has accelerated the deliveries, but I don't think it's going backwards once the situation subsides, right? It's too easy. I, I got my grocery order saved now and I figured it all out and, and Amazon brings my groceries and no my, even if I could go to this carefree to the store and dance around in the aisles, why would I do that now that I've got it all figured out? Right. I'd rather stay home and watch YouTube or work <laughs> or yeah. spend time with my kids or my spouse or whatever you like to do at home. Yeah, this is, I think, in some ways, the tragedy of this certain situation has really helped. And even older people that might not be technically minded have had to figure it out. My, my mom, she's figured it out. And, yep. you know, it was a little hard, but she can do it now and she's comfortable with it, you know, so I think it's fantastic. Well, I always ask my guests about a big challenge in their life. Now, you've been in a world of challenges because you've started companies, raised money. I mean, all this stuff is difficult and challenging. So I want you to share one of those situations that had uh, kind of set you back a bit. But more importantly, what did you learn from it so you could come out positive on the other end? So, you know, I've had many, many ups and downs throughout my career, right? I've, I, this is my fifth startup company and two of the couple of successes, a couple of failures. So, you know, one thing I've 
I think one thing I've learned along the way is that to try to maintain a not get too high on the highs and not get too lows on the lows, right? Because I've had absolute catastrophic failures. And I've had situations where I thought it was going to be a home run. And then within a matter of a week or two, it went from home run situation to devastating situation, right? And sometimes it's outside of your control, you know, like the current COVID situation, if you're in a tick, if you're in the live entertainment world, right? Like, yeah, uh, uh, there's a lot of crazy stories there. And so I think over time, I've learned to try to not get too knocked down and keep going from those failures, from those setbacks, and also try not to, you know, uh, count your chickens before they hatch and, and, uh, and not get too excited on the upside. It's, it's a marathon, not a sprint doing these startup companies. And there are no overnight successes. You know, you hear about the overnight seven year successes that you've never heard of. And, and all of a sudden, but they were working on it for seven years some, in some form or fashion before that, right? Like it's a marathon. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you said that. So let me ask you this for people out there that have a hard time dealing with these ups and downs, especially the downs, of course. The ups are always kind of nice, but you're right. Don't count your chickens before the eggs are hatched. There might not be anything in those eggs. You just don't know it yet because they haven't hatched yet. What are some of the ways that you work your way through these low points so that you can maintain and not get totally dejected? Because if anything, we know things can and will go wrong. And a lot of people just they throw their hands in the air and say, I'm done, I give up. People like you don't do that very well, I'm assuming, because that's your your life, right? So what yeah. are, if I ask you, what are what's one or two little tips you would share, say with me, say if uh, my podcast fails tomorrow and I'm so dejected, I'm never going to do this again. Why? What are some things that you kind of ask yourself to kind of get you past that so you can move forward? Well, I mean, you're right that as part of the process, you're going to get kicked around a lot. And I think as an entrepreneur, you have to have somewhat of an unhealthy relationship with risk, right? Because um, <laughs> I like that <laughs> unhealthy relationship with risk. <laughs> well, and that's an inverse way of saying you're an optimist, right? Yes. Uh, you're generally an optimist, which means that you don't evaluate risk greatly or you're willing to take on a lot more risk than most people are. Yeah. And so ex- understanding that and accepting that then I think it becomes about your support system, right? Like mm-hmm. I've had a, an executive coach for a long time that I talk, it's being a CEO can be, and a founder can be a lonely job, right? Yes. I yeah. mean, you're making these decisions and I'm fortunate that I've, I've been making them for a long time, so I think I can rely on experience. But even now you're just making decisions, you're doing the best you can, but you, who knows if you're right or not. And, um, but they affect a lot of people. And so, I think it's it can be a very stressful and taking other people's money can be very stressful, right? When you raise venture capital. And so I think having a support system, right? And that comes down to, like I said, I have an executive coach, but I also, I like to surround myself with people I like spending time with and who I think are smarter than me at things. And, you know, startups are all about a group of people trying to do something together. And if, if, if the people around you are supportive and, and in it with you, it's less taxing emotionally, mentally than if you're in it on your own. You know, I, I once spent six months in the garage working on something totally by myself that I thought was a great idea. And I still think it's a good idea, but it was lonely, you know? And so there is something about doing it with other people that team sports versus individual sports. And I think startups are team sports. It's great advice. And I always tell that to people, find a group of people that you really value. There's that old saying that we are the culmination of the five people we spend the most time with. And one could be your spouse or partner, whoever that might be. But the others should be people that, like you said, are smarter than you and can teach you something. And that builds time to build that trust with them. But it's so, so, so valuable. It'll help you get through those things. Well, great advice from you. We're going to take a break. and we come back, we're going to talk about your personal passion for cars because we are on cars. Yeah, here we're repairing cars. It's uh, Joel's birthday. So we're going to have another bite of the birthday cake here. And we'll be right back. Keep your seatbelt on. Let's take a pit stop from the conversation and talk about my charity of choice, Here at Cars Yeah, America's Automotive Trust. America's Automotive Trust is a group of like-minded nonprofits working together to preserve and promote car culture across the country. Together, they provide scholarships and grants to aspiring technicians and restoration artists. They provide youth education programs and bring communities together through auto-related events, car shows, and drives. 
One of those nonprofits is very near and dear to my heart because it's right down the road from the Cars Yeah headquarters. It's the LeMay America's Car Museum in Tacoma, Washington. One of the world's truly great automobile collections and one of those must-see bucket list destinations for car people like you and me. If you haven't seen it, I hope you make a trip soon. And if you have seen it, it's probably time to visit again. To learn more about this fantastic museum, go to www.americascarmuseum.org. And while you're there, you can donate to help them keep their engines running. That's www.americascarmuseum.org. So what do you do after running a race team for 27 years with over 100 podiums, multiple Daytona wins, and a win at Le Mans, racer, and the Racers Group team owner, Kevin Buckler, founded Adobe Road Winery. Located in Petaluma, California, he and his team have created a winning combination with the Racing Series. These are four ultra-premium red wine blends that are in a class of their own. Like racing, these wines comprise of art, precision, engineering, science, wrapped in a whole lot of fun. You can choose from four blends, titled Redline, Apex, Shift, and the 24. Today I'm going to tell you about Apex. It's a rich and complex blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, and Cabernet Franc. This blend is a showcase of perfection and hits the Apex with its full-bodied smooth finish. An added very cool option is the label. It's a multi-dimensional rumble strip Apex, reminiscent of Turn 4 at Laguna Seca. The racing series is a spectacular gift for the automotive enthusiast in your life, and I've got a deal for you. If you use the code CARSYEAH, all one word in all caps, at checkout, you get $10 off any purchase of the wines from the racing series. Your wine ships promptly and arrives quickly. Use the code CARSYEAH at checkout for $10 off your purchase today. There's always a seat at the table for excellence with the racing series. Go to adoberoadwines.com today and use the code cars. Yeah. Cheers. All right, Joel, we're back. And I would love for you to share a story with me that uh, instigated this personal passion that you have for cars, that pivotal moment in your life. And you knew that you were going to be a bit of a car guy. Sure. Well, my very first car was a 1974 Porsche 914. And I, Worked at McDonald's when I was from the age of 14 onwards, and I saved and saved and saved. And when I was about 17, I think I spent $2,500 on, and I thought I was the smartest person alive because I had this classic sports car. You know, it's probably 1992-ish or so, and, you know, it looked so good. And the people who told me, oh, it's going to cost you a fortune to, you know, I didn't listen to any of those people, and it cost me a fortune. And, and it was, it was... I swear, I, I maxed out my AAA, you know, AAA, unbeknownst to me, had a maximum number of toes <laughs> yes. uh, with your membership. Yeah. And I, I maxed those out. And, you know, if I turned the key and it started, it was a happy day. <laughs> and so I became a car owner and then I quickly became a car repair slash maintenance customer uh, through that purchase. Yeah. Yeah. It taught you a lot of things. The first Porsche I had was a 74 911. And, okay. And I'd always wanted a 911 and I saved and saved and saved and finally got one. And you're right. It was a lot more expensive. To, and I drove it every day to work. So it, needed, oh. it they, those things need service and care. I did have a 73 two liter 914 for a while that I got this brain child that that would be a great first car for my son. My wife was gone during the week. I brought it home. <laughs> Maybe I knew what the answer was going to be to that. And she looked at me and said, no. <laughs> the car with zero safety features? I see no airbag. I see the words Porsche on this thing and big trucks will run right over the top of him. So yeah. that's a bad idea. So we fixed it up and he drove it around a little bit and then we got him a safer BMW. But uh, yeah, those are fun little cars. I especially love the 914.6s. They're just awesome yeah. cool. And they become quite collectible uh, as well as 914s have. Well, uh, you may have answered the next question in a way here, but I always ask my guests, if you were manifest as a car, like you turned into a car, what would you be? You know, I think I'd have the opposite answer for this, which is that I'm a tech nerd and it would probably be a, a computerized modern car versus my simplistic antique cars that I enjoy. Um I'm going to go with a Mercedes EQ, the modern electronic 
car. Uh, you know, that's, I think that's the way I'd go. Well, since you work in the tech world, that makes sense to me. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, upper echelon. And of course, uh, being partnered up with uh, the great people at Daimler. Benz, I mean, those guys know what they're doing. They make fantastic cars. They have for a long, long time. I mean, when you think about it, the first, well, some people debate this, but really the first gasoline powered car it wasn't really gasoline it was that first car that uh, mr benz made that his wife yes. bertha stole out of the garage and drove drove away with her kids for a while but uh, that's a, a great story too so that makes sense the inventor of the automobile yeah right? that's, absolutely that's certainly they yeah. one of their many claims to fame yeah yeah well great company and uh fantastic vehicles as well well i want to go jump into what i call the last lap i'm going to fire off a series of questions have you do some quick blips of that mercedes eq although would that be quiet uh, it might yeah. not be very loud. So yeah, just we'll, we'll we'll imagine the sounds. That's the thing that I miss with electric cars is that wonderful sound, but that's what old cars are for, right? You know what? They've added sounds to the electric cars now, and I kind of feel it's wrong. I kind of like the uh, the stealth mode of the yeah. electric cars. Yeah, yeah, I think it's kind of cool, too. Absolutely. You think of those uh, those early ones that had kind of weird, spacey sounds to them. It's like, I don't think I like that very much. But I think yeah. they did that for pedestrian safety. Absolutely. Safety, yeah. for sure. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And Mercedes is all about that. What's one of your personal habits, Joel, that you believe has contributed to your many successes in life? I think the desire to continue learning and curiosity on personal growth, right? So I'm voracious, ferocious, voracious reader. You could be both. <laughs> For, ferocious, voracious. You could be uh, ferocious uh, too. Yeah. I read a lot. You know, I try to stay current and uh, with whether it's pop culture or technology or, or my industry. And, you know, I care a lot about efficiency and making things better. And, and that's kind of the, the culmination of those personal qualities has kind of landed me in the career I am, which I, I found early on in life and have done the same thing for 20 years and it's never felt like work. Very cool. Now, if I could wave a magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink or a meal with anybody in the automotive industry, now this could be somebody that's alive or somebody who's passed, who would it be? I'm going to go with uh, Shelby, Carol Shelby. Carol, um, okay. Yeah, I I really uh, like any of the guy, the, 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 the people who were making cars do things that they had never done before, right? Like the dreamers, so to speak, yes. and the, the engineers and whether that's automotive or space or, or, you know, people who are, are, are trying to climb new mountains. I think I really admire. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Kind of reminds me, you said that word dreamers reminds me of that great Apple commercial they did uh, where they showed all the pioneers. I mean, that one really kind of, I think, sticks to entrepreneurs and people who want to try to be something and do something different. And I look back at some of these people like Carol Shelby or uh, Henry Ford. Those are the two top names, by the way, mentioned here on Cars. Yeah, people are they? Like okay. get together. <laughs> oh. well, someone who's coming up fast on them is Elon, of course, uh, yeah. uh, with what he's doing. You know, I'd love to uh, be able to sit down and talk with that guy. Now, when it comes to automotive advice, Advice. Now, this might re relate to repairs. What's the best advice someone else has ever offered you? Well, the best advice someone's ever offered me and that I now offer folks is do your maintenance. You know, a, what's the expression? A, uh, a, a pinch of preventative, well, a pound of yeah. pain. I, I, yeah. I, I should know <laughs> the expression, but, but absolutely you're staying on top of your maintenance and having the car looked at when it doesn't need to be looked at will save you a ton of money on the back end whether it's my old car or a new car i've got so many examples of it and now i'm older more responsible you know i'm i'm set, i'm set in my ways and and i i do it right on schedule and i i do everything well but i certainly had my younger years where i I, I ignored it and was busy with other things and seized an engine or did what, you know, did, did crazy things and just was irresponsible with my car ownership. Yeah, it's very, very uh, good, that preventative maintenance. I've been that way, diligent too. And sometimes, you know, even I've had my wife say, well, why are you doing that? You hardly ever drive that car. I'm like, well, yeah. because uh, I don't want anything to happen to it. When you mentioned your your batteries, your cars are plugged in, right? I, yeah. It, it, you're in the 1% there, right? But it's probably saved you a ton of money because we are getting a ton of, of no starts and battery calls because the cars sit there and then you don't take care of them. And then 
we get to show up and take care of it in a more expensive way, unfortunately, if you don't do the preventative maintenance. Especially batteries, because people don't realize that you don't want to run a battery all the way down uh, yeah. because you just lost a, a big chunk of its life forever and you'll never get that back. So I've always had my car on maintainers. And uh, I even saw, I was reading in a recent car magazine, a guy I was asking about, and he said, oh, if, if your car is going to sit for six months, you don't have to do anything. And I just went, <laughs> Really? Uh, I don't think so. I would disagree with that uh, big time. And the other thing, of course, uh, the same with fuel preservative. I mean, if you're just not driving your car much, put some fuel preservative in there because it will turn and some fuels aren't as great as you think. You never know what's getting mixed in that tank. Definitely worth doing. Now, when it comes to resources, I would think that your business is a great resource. So we'll put that on the, the top of the list as a great resource. Is there another kind of go-to for you, maybe somewhere that you seem to find yourself going to quite often? My favorite resource is Medium, the blogging platform. Medium? Medium, yeah. And whether you want automotive knowledge or computer programming knowledge or how to improve your life schedule and sleeping or be a better human, any topic you can imagine, people are writing every day about all these topics and they blog about it and you set up some preferences and then it kind of figures out based on which links you click in the daily email what you like and what you read and it gives you more of that and i've got it tuned that almost it's it's annoying almost everything in my daily email i want to read and i just don't have time to do it but i think blogging and this content universe we live in right now is so phenomenal so figuring out how to get we get a way to a way to get effective content every day is awesome absolutely well i'll remind my listeners for those of you who are not subscribed to my blog here at cars yeah there's a nice segue uh just go to cars click on the free book button i'll send you my my blog every week comes out on tuesday and by the way just so you know it can be read in a minute and a half. That's one of my rules. And it's always got inspiration. It's always got a tie to cars. And it's always something uplifting. Uh, yeah, and won't bog you down. Plus, you get your name in the hat for some free books. I'm giving away a book this week, actually, on Moto Guzzi by uh, uh, Ian, uh, who has been on the show a couple times, wrote an awesome new book on Moto Guzzi. So there's another reason to go to my show and get my blogs. How about um, a book? Now, you mentioned you love to read. Is there a book you'd like to share that you think our listeners should read? Sure. Uh, <laughs> I do. There's a lot of books on the shelf. I, you know, I always have trouble with people saying favorites because it's like, it's almost like which of my kids is my favorite. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. and maybe, maybe we, we clarify it as recent that you enjoy. No, I, I, I'll give you one. Okay. Um, uh, there's a book I love that comes to mind, uh, you know, for entrepreneurship called ship of gold in the deep blue sea. And I think it was written in the nineties, um, around, and it's about a guy who was an engineer in the Midwest, nowhere near an ocean who wanted to find the buried sunken treasure of this gold ship that was coming from the San Francisco gold rush to New York and sunk in like the Bermuda triangle area. And he, invented a way to find buried treasure in deep ocean and then he invented a way to go down and get it and he raised money from investors and you could only go into the atlantic ocean during certain non-hurricane seasons right. so there was a annual window that was small and tons of adversity inventing something that never existed raising money taking years to do it and in the end finding the buried treasure so i it's a it's a fun Indiana Jones style, true story about many lessons in business and life. Yeah. Great book by Gary Kinder. Yeah. Definitely worth a read. It's, it's a fun one. Talk about overcoming some crazy stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's wild. You can find all these resources that Joel has shared on his show notes page. Just go to carsia.com, type in Joe Milne, M-I-L-N-E. There's a secret E on the end, just like on the last of my name. And uh, you'll find everything there, including a wonderful listing of all sorts of books. All right, Joel, we're up to the checkered flag, and this last question can be a bit of a doozy. I'm going to buy you a cool collector car today because it's your birthday. You can have anything you want. doesn't matter where it is, how much it costs. I'm going to park it in your garage. But here are the rules. You can't sell it to start another business with because I know that's what you do. You'd pick a GTO and sell mm -hmm. it and start a few more businesses. Uh, nice to have 70, 80 million bucks to start a business with. I want you to drive it and enjoy it. So it needs to tick a lot of boxes. No dust collectors or garage queens allowed on cars. Yeah, but it's the only one cool car you can have in your garage. You can keep your daily drivers, but this has to be something special. So what am I going to buy you for your birthday? I'm going to put a big red bow right on the top. You know, 
I'm going to go with a late 50s 356 Porsche okay. uh, Speedster. Convertible, of course. Yeah, well, the Speedsters were, so you, you, you get an automatic no top on that one. Yes, exactly. So, um, you know, I love the simplicity and, um, you know, uh, the, the, the 50s and 60s European sports cars in their, you know, craftsmanship and simplicity. And, you know, my current cars are all high tech, electric, this and that. And I think for the for the fun ones of just going out and being an old man on the weekend, it's the classic Porsches and, and yeah. you know, the classic Mercedes sports cars from that era. Well, you picked a car near and dear to my heart. That car has been on my bucket list my entire life. Uh, I think in a way I missed the boat because they used to be somewhat affordable. They become unobtainium, crazy expensive. I mean, ridiculous considering they're pretty basic little Volkswagen kind of, really. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, I made a mistake, though. I went and drove a couple outlaw versions of those cars, one built by John Wilhoyt in Long Beach. Uh, he built a... a a Beck 550 Spider I had uh, for a while, and then one by Rod Emery, who builds like ultimate outlaw cars. And once you drive their modified versions of these old Porsches, you'll never mm -hmm. drive a normal old Porsche again because they're just, <laughs> they're slugs. They're so slow. But you know, you said something, be an old man. There's something nice about getting in those cars, putting on the string back gloves and going back in time and not caring about getting anywhere fast. That's not what it's about. That's it's right. about the experience. So I love those cars. I would love to buy you one of those cars. What, now I'm going to, what I'm going to do is buy you a 58 because that's my favorite year because that's the year I was born. So that's why I pick it. And that was right towards the end. So I figured they yeah. had everything dialed in, right? You know, what color would you like that Speedster to be? I mean, it's got to be Porsche red. Red. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we'll go with r ruby red. And um, I'm going to add a little feature, the Rudge knockoff wheels, because that was a very coveted option for those years. So we're going to make yours. I call them dog killers because if the dogs chase the car, they get... <laughs> <laughs> smacked in the face. <laughs> All right, I will get to work. I'm sure I can find you one of those. Uh, it's going to be fun to deliver that to you. <laughs> Joel, you have taken me on a great ride. I've really enjoyed meeting you today. Plus, I got to spend a little bit of your birthday with you. So thank you for doing that with me today. Before I let you go, would you share one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off down the coast highway in that 356 Speedster? Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really think that uh, if you're thinking about a business these days, uh, thinking about things that, that make life frictionless and make life more convenient is, is a great way to um, spend your time, right? And so as we discussed earlier, we, you know, with, with the COVID situation, people staying at home, we came into this industry that at-home services are accelerating. But, but really – We've seen it before COVID and we'll continue to see this acceleration of making life convenient. People expect to press a button on their phone, not think about how all the magic happens in the background and it just arrives at their doorstep. So I'm excited to see what else comes out and I'm, I'm excited to continue to order my groceries on Amazon and excited to continue to get my car repaired with Repair Smith. So thanks so much for having me today. Well, absolutely. Now, how can people learn more about Repair Repair Smith. Even if they're not in a region you're there yet, you're going to be there. You're on your way. So where do they go to find you? Absolutely. We will be there. Um, repairsmith.com is our website. You can go on there. We give upfront transparent quotes and you can schedule your appointment uh, at home or at your office, wherever is convenient to you. Absolutely. I'll make sure to put a link to that, but it's easy to find. Repairsmith.com. Super easy to find. Joel, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise and for sharing your life with me today, especially on your birthday. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thank you. You're welcome. And happy birthday. I appreciate it. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting, but what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy to read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know. Everything from investing to effective ways to get 
rid of credit card debt, and it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10, and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah! Yeah!